This is Earth, so far the only known planet that can sustain life. It's been sustaining life for over 3 billion years and humans for about 6 million years. When seen from space, our planet looks calm, serene, mighty and magnificent, focused on rotating and revolving around the Sun. But when you zoom in, it's a different story altogether. The planet that nurtured the human race for billions of years is now at its mercy. Firstly, humans overpopulated the planet. We understand that every life is precious, but there are 8 billion of us on Earth. Experts say that we are way too many. Way too many more than this planet can sustainably carry. Many say that the planet has a capacity of 9 to 10 billion people, and we are closer to hitting this mark than we think. In fact, there will be 10 billion people on this planet in about 33 years. Currently, Humanity is using the equivalent of 1.75 Earths to provide for itself. This means we're living on one planet but consuming the resources of almost two planets. We are exploiting resources like we're never going to run out. But more on that later. Coming back to overpopulation. How many humans can this planet sustain? Well, the planet reached its limit 53 years ago. In 1970, there were 3.7 billion people on the planet, less than half the population of today, and just about enough for the planet to sustain. Ever since then, humans are living on what's called an ecological debt. This means our annual demand of resources is way more than what our planet can naturally provide in a year. This is a loan of sorts, and who will repay it? Our children and grandchildren and their grandchildren. That is, if we leave anything on this planet for them to have. In the 19th century, a UK economist, Thomas Malthus, shared his perspective on overpopulation. He argued that populations inevitably expand until they outgrow their available food supply. He believed that disease, famine, war or calamity would reverse the population growth. We understand that Malthus was a controversial personality, but his pessimism on overpopulation may hold some truth. Now, let's talk about the most important natural resource. Water. Or maybe we should say fresh water. Humans cannot live without drinking water longer than three days. We get fresh water from glaciers, lakes, reservoirs, ponds and streams. Fresh water is central to our being. We drink it. We use it to grow crops. We use it in the manufacturing and energy industries. Fresh water prevents erosion. It provides natural protection from flooding. And do you know when we are going to run out of fresh water? Experts say in 16 years. Yes, we are likely to run out of fresh water in less than two decades. How do we prevent it? We need to drastically reduce our consumption. We need to stop the continuous exploitation and pollution of our freshwater bodies. Needless to say, easier said than done. What about soil? Soil essentially puts food on our plate. If there's no soil, there's no food. It naturally purifies water, protects us from floods and tackles droughts. Basically, it's our life support system. Humans have managed to ruin soil as well. Deforestation, overgrazing, intensive cultivation. These are just a few practices that have caused some irreversible harm to the soil. We say irreversible because it takes hundreds of thousands of years to form an inch of topsoil. Topsoil is one of the most important elements in food production. With over 8 billion mouths to feed, we need to double our food production. But resources are scarce. We are losing 75 billion tons of topsoil in a year. What about air? No good news there either. The air that we breathe is dangerously polluted. According to the World Health Organization, 9 out of 10 people breathe polluted air, and it adds up. In order to cater to over 8 billion people, we need industries. These industries produce goods that we think we need to go about our daily lives. In that process, industries pump out dirty emissions. They mix with the air and enter our lungs. Air pollution is called a silent killer. It's the fourth leading contributor to early death. The current levels of greenhouse gas emissions are very high. 
in 2021, it was predicted that our planet has about 11 years to cut emissions if it wants to avoid dire climate conditions. There is a 50% chance that temperatures will rise by 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2033. By 2043, it will jump by 1.7 degrees Celsius. And by 2054, the temperature will rise by 2 degrees Celsius. And when that happens, the world will witness catastrophic conditions. Nearly 3 billion people will likely slip into chronic water scarcity. Now, let's try to answer an important question. How long until global warming makes our planet uninhabitable? About 30 to 50 years. This isn't our projection. NASA says that some regions of the planet will not be habitable in 50 years' time due to climate change. So yes, our planet looks mighty, but the devil is in the detail. We are turning the planet into a giant ball of trash. We're making the planet sicker. Our aim here is not to alarm you or instill fear. Our aim is to educate you about what's going on outside the comfort of your home and how it might impact you. Mahatma Gandhi once said, there's enough for everyone's need, but not for everyone's greed. Our greed has driven us to a point of no return. And if projections are to be believed, the doomsday is just around the corner.